Welcome to Aging Insight with your host, John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by Another edition of Aging Insight. I'm Lisa Schollmeyer, elder law attorney based here in the Arklatex area, and I'm here with my co host, John Ross, also an elder law attorney, and you are watching Aging Insight. And this is a program that we have targeted for seniors and families that care for seniors because, you know, in order to age in place and to and to navigate through these aging processes, you know, uh, life is complex. And so you need information and you need answers. And so that's what Aging Insight is all about. We want to assist you and your family where you can age on your own terms without going broke and without being a burden on others. And, uh, you know, a lot of times all it takes is a little forethought, a little planning, and uh, you know, you just keep sailing on. Yeah, a little forethought, a little planning, and a whole lot of knowledge. Yeah. And that's that's where this program comes. You know, because we try to combine issues related to your housing, to your health, to your finances, and to the law. And, and all of these things kind of combine and if you know how to put the pieces together, you can kind of draw that map of yeah. how you're going to get through. Now, there, there's actually another little piece, you know, and this is the this is the day to day. This is the emotional piece. The the how do you, you know, maybe you've got the housing situation figured out, and you know how you're going to pay for care, and you've got all of the powers of attorney in place, and you've got all your legal side done. But you know, there's still that day-to-day -day of managing the, the affairs of somebody with a disability, especially something like Alzheimer's. Um, uh, Alzheimer's and other dementias. There's, there's about uh, 13 different types of dementias, uh, which you know, a lot of, when people say dementia, dementia is not actually a disease. Dementia right. is a symptom. Kind of like saying you have a cough. A cough is not a disease, it's a symptom of something else. Maybe you have bronchitis sure. and the cough is the symptom. Well, dementia is a symptom. The underlying disease could be Alzheimer's, it could be Parkinson's, it could be uh, Lewy body. There's lots of different types right. out there. But, you know, when, uh, when you're dealing with folks with these type of diseases, um, you've kind of got to adjust. And, you know, if you're the caregiver, Maybe you're the spouse, maybe you're the child that's there every day. You've already adjusted to yeah. how to deal with them. Well, you know, you, you have. Um, the problem a lot of times we'll see with a, uh, you know, whenever someone uh, starts exhibiting signs of dementia, uh, you know, the, the first uh, the first track that everyone takes is denial. Frankly, the, the patient denies, the spouse, family denies. And so sometimes that early uh, part of the, of the process can be full of a lot of conflict because, you know, there's a lot of bickering and arguing with the person who, uh, the patient's not trying to be argumentative. They just, uh, the dementia symptom has, overtaken what had maybe previously been the most clear thinking, logical person in your life. So, um, but a lot of times once that acceptance of the, those first signs of dementia and the comes and those caregivers, spouses, uh, they, they adjust and realize that this is in fact uh, something that they're gonna have to deal with and something that has to be managed. Uh, then a lot of times those people closest to that person experiencing dementias can adjust and have adjusted. And, and so now the person with dementia is at their most comfortable because we have loving caregivers and family members who are trying to, uh, you know, uh, soften the edges, so to speak, and, and try to keep everything on track. Yeah, you know, and that's, and that's all fine and dandy right up until 
it starts coming around for family gathering season. You know, Thanksgiving, yeah, Christmas, just, yeah, uh, that, you know, these time frames when now all of a sudden you've got, uh, you've got a change in the routine. Now, this may, you may have always had Christmas and it may have always been a big family gathering, but, but because of these uh, Alzheimer's and, and other dementias, we've got a change of circumstances. And so planning for family gatherings like Christmas, when you've got a member of the family who uh, suffers from one of these diseases, whether they're in the early stages or whether they're in the, the latter stages, the planning can be critical. Uh, you know, Lisa, you told me a, a story one time about you were at a nursing home uh, waiting to see one of your clients and a, a family had walked in. That's right. And, and it was, a, it, you know, you've got uh, uh, mom and dad who, you know, about our age. Right, and clearly their parent was the patient at the facility. Right, and they seem comfortable enough. Sure. They're, they're there to see mom and dad. But then they've got their kids in tow. <laughs> a passel of teenage boys. <laughs> and, and, and when Lisa was telling me the story, she said, you could see how uncomfortable the, these, these, these kids were. And when I say kids, you know, we're talking 15, 17, 13, you know, yeah. uh, children but young adults and but they're they're uncomfortable because they don't know and they wear it oh yes it was right very, on their face very apparent that these young men were were very uncomfortable and you know um they're there to see their grandfather but uh you know my suspicion is this was was right around thanksgiving my suspicion was they probably hadn't seen their grandfather in in some weeks uh you know Families live apart from each other now, um, you know, and so here we are, uh, Thanksgiving time, holiday time, and the family comes up to a memory care facility to visit granddad. Yeah, so, so the first thing you want to do here is, is familiarize the, the family members. You know, if you're that caregiver, whether it's a spouse or whether you're the child that's doing the caregiving, you need to familiarize the people who are coming over with what to expect. Let them, you know, tell them about the disease. Let them learn what the, the habits of the person are, what, what upsets them or, or what keeps them calm. Um, and let them know what to expect so that they're not walking in with this sense of dread. Well, and you know, the other thing on that is, you know, talk to your family members that may be coming in from out of town and are going to be seeing that parent or grandparent for the first time in a while. Um, and, and let them know what to expect. But, you know, a lot of times those out of town relatives, they want to argue with the caregiver or minimize the issue um, because again, maybe they're not quite to that stage of accepting the process that's going on. As the caregiver, you don't need that stress. Just give the information so that you can prepare the family because you're looking at the comfort of the uh, dementia uh, person. So, uh, you know, don't, don't argue with the other family members. Give them the information, you know, ask them, you know, to, to adjust appropriately and then carry on. That's right. So the first thing in, in our family gathering for, for people that have uh, somebody like this in their family is, is to, to, you know, let everybody know what to expect. When they, when they show up and, and get them in on it. But we've got a few other suggestions. We just need to take a quick break before we get to them. So uh, stick around and we'll be right back. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end-of-life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community, by the community. With my dad, it was, it was in a hospital setting. Um, and in his situation, he fell into renal failure. He also helped us make the decision to be on hospice. I have to admit, it took a, a huge weight off our shoulders for him to be willing 
that offered us a lot of comfort along with the hospice company itself but it, it gave us closure and it helped us through the entire process. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Off of McKnight Road in Texarkana, Texas, the Oaks Independent are apartments for seniors who love secure peace of mind and consistency in their lives. You're going to fall in love with this newly built luxurious residential establishment for the aging adult. All bills are included and all apartments are wheelchair accessible, inclusive with all the amenities. Live in style, comfort and accessibility. Live independent. Call today to schedule a tour. The Oaks Independent. Welcome back to Aging Insight, and you know, I guess I would call this our, uh, you know, holiday preparation edition of Aging Insight. And you know, we're talking today about, uh, you know, dealing with a change in routine, particularly that's brought on by the holidays. Uh, when you have a family member with dementias or um, other disease processes that, you know, really kind of are changing their experience of those holidays. So, you know, we've talked about make sure you let other family members know who may be coming to visit uh, about what to expect. Uh, so that way maybe that keeps the comfort level for everyone um, high and there's no surprises. So that's the first uh, bit of advice. And, and John, what else would you suggest? Yeah, you know, the second thing here that, that, that I typically recommend to folks is about adjusting your own expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times for, uh, for whether we're talking about the caregiver or whether we're talking about other family members who are gonna be a part of this uh, uh, Christmas celebration, for example, um, you know, in their mind are all of the uh, Christmases of, of the past. You know, the big family gatherings and, and the jokes and the stories and the camaraderie and, and just that, that fellowship that comes with being surrounded by your family. And you want that again. And so the, the expectation is that this Christmas is gonna be just like every other Christmas. Um, and you know, you want everybody to be around, you wanna do a big production, but then, you know, when you're dealing with somebody in the household that has uh, Alzheimer's, for example, you know, large groups can be upsetting. They don't do the same things that they used to. They may not, uh, you know, they may not be as aware of their surroundings as they once were. Uh, they might get agitated. And, and so if your expectations are very high, um, you know, a lot of times that can cause you to get upset. Um, or the other people who have shown up. Uh, so what you, know, what you wanna do here is adjust expectations so that you get the Christmas uh, that you want, um, but you know, not, uh, it may not be the one that you, that you hope for, but at least it's the one that you expect and it doesn't cause a lot of hurt feelings. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and kind of in line with that, John, is you know, sometimes when you're dealing with an elderly family member, you know, maybe that Christmas Eve night celebration may not be the, the best, most conducive uh, time with that elderly family member. And so, you know, for instance, you mentioned Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's patients often has, uh, have a condition that we refer to as sundowners, where as the day goes on, as we get closer into the evening, you know, their, their condition worsens as opposed to, uh, you know, a mid-morning or, or lunchtime, uh, the person is, does much better during earlier times of the day. So, you know, maybe you need to not only adjust your expectations, but even adjust your plans to where, you know, make it a big family brunch or a lunchtime uh, celebration. Uh, so that way your evening routine can, you know, stay more of the same and not be quite as uh, upsetting to that that family member. Yeah, and this, you know, this kind of goes back to in, you know, incorporating the the wants and desires of that person. You know, on the one hand, if they're better in the mornings than they are in the evenings, then yeah, do your celebration in the morning. But you know, again, with a with a disease like Alzheimer's, 
the the disease can actually it it actually ages the person backwards in their mind so while their body is getting older a lot of times their mind is getting younger the reason that they don't say remember who their uh, children are is because they may know that they have children but in their mind their children are young kids not these 50 year old adults standing in front of them they may uh, when they see the grandkids walk in they may call them by their child's name because they've aged backwards to a point where they're a much younger person in their mind and if you know that and if you can kind of sense that structuring the holidays to not necessarily what they were last year but maybe something similar to what they were 30 years ago or 40 years ago or even when that person was a child um, that a lot of times can give them a feeling of comfort um, and and makes it you know frankly kind of makes it more personal to them sure you know any other thing in, in these holidays you know we're talking about we're, we try to recapture those those best holidays um, and recreate them um, you know with uh, a person with suffers from dementia or Alzheimer's uh, you know so often as caregivers and as children, as we watch that person slip away, we really treasure those moments where they are fully with us and they're enjoying the moment and they, um, you know, so, you know, we do want to make sure and provide an environment that, that can frankly, you know, bring out that moment of, uh, you know, when you really get your parent or your grandparent back there with you for for a bit and they're enjoying themselves so we, the, yeah and and the other part of the the other side of that is have some space blocked off in case they're not enjoying themselves you know uh have a have a, a guest room or a or your bedroom set aside where that can be a quiet place that if that person seems agitated or or upset um, that maybe they can go in that back room where nobody else is going to be. And, and maybe that room is, is not decorated. There's not a lot of lights. There's not a lot of flashy stuff going on. It's just a place where they can be calm and get away from the rest of the bunch. I mean, you know, uh, it's certainly been family gatherings where I kind of felt like maybe I, I wanted to get, get away from everybody well, for, for a few minutes. Well, sure. You know, a lot of seniors, um, they may not have young children underfoot all the time and these family gatherings often bring in those young children and and while lots of folks are glad to see them um, you know a lot of times uh, continued time with those young children as as they eat the snacks and the sugar gets going and they're running all around is really stressful on that senior so yes a, a quiet place to retreat to where maybe they could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, or frankly just kind of get away uh, is a great idea. Yeah, just because you want your kids to have some time with grandpa doesn't necessarily mean grandpa <laughs> wants time with them. And you need to respect that, not get your feelings hurt because we want to make it enjoyable for everybody involved. So right. uh, we're going to take another quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about just a, a few more little issues as we close out the show. So stick around. We'll be right back. All our moments should be cherished. SEMA Hospice provides comfort care when you need it most with compassion, dignity, and respect. Along with Jordan Health Services, SEMA Hospice provides compassionate continuity of care. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. As things get older, they require more care. This car and I have seen a lot of miles together, but because I take care of her, she runs just like she did in 1955. That's why I chose the Wadley Senior Clinic with an individualized care plan designed just for me and a convenient location off Jefferson Avenue. They have everything to keep me running like new. It's not about the miles, it's about the journey. Let the Wadley Senior Clinic keep you happy, healthy, and cruising down the road of life. Hi there, I'm Larry Sims. It's been my privilege for the past several years to be a volunteer board member of Hospice of Texarkana. And there I'm able to represent community members like you. We continually customize our end-of-life care to better meet the needs of our community. As an example, our medical director and nurse practitioner still make visits to homes and facilities. Call today to learn more about the help we can give your family. 
Hospice of Texarkana, the nonprofit hospice established in 1985 for the community by the community. From our first moments to our final days, life's journey should be remembered free of burden and worry. Family should be cherished. SEMA Hospice provides comfort, care, dignity, and respect. Learn more about SEMA Hospice at SEMAHospice.com. SEMA Hospice, comfort and care when it matters most. Welcome back to Aging Inside, everybody. I'm John Ross here with Lisa Schultmeyer, and today we're talking about... Uh, Planning for those those family gatherings, particularly when you've got the a family member with something like Alzheimer's or dementia, you know, uh, just kind of getting everybody ready for this so that it's a fun and enjoyable time for everybody. And we we kind of started out by talking about making sure everybody who's coming over knows what to expect, that they they understand the 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 particulars of that disease or, or that person so that uh, so that everybody's on the same page and they can work through that and and as we do that we also want to manage our own expectations so that you know when you've got uh, people with with needs Christmas not going to be the same as it was last year but that doesn't mean that it can't still be good it, you just gotta manage your expectations now you know uh, Lisa we got a few other things here yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you kind of touched on this a uh, moment ago, John, but you know, a, a person who has dementias or those type of uh, processes going on, you know, they are, the, the studies have shown that music is really a, a key for a lot of patients that, that suffer with these type things. And so, you know, playing that, that favorite holiday music, you know, uh, uh, that speaks to that person it's it's amazing a lot of times how a person responds to that kind of music so um you know the the music the the keeping things the same the same finger foods the same type specialties you know if somebody always makes the fudge and and all that you know try to keep that going because any all those things are anchors for that person that's suffering from dementia that they can they can fall back on and it's familiar to them because it's been repeated year and year in and year out. Um, so those are a couple of things. The other thing that's always so difficult when we're talking about a person with dementia is what kind of gifts does that type, does that person need? Does that person want? Um, should you buy? Uh, what should you buy for someone like that? You know, gift giving is a part of the holiday tradition, so we don't want to leave someone out. Um, and uh, so you got to be mindful about the type of gifts that you give. I mean, we obviously don't want to give uh, that senior a, a techno gizmo, you know, latest, greatest technology thing that, you know, maybe they're never going to operate. Um, but, you know, kind of dial it back a little bit, you know, comfortable clothes that are easy to get on and off. You know, that's a, that's a real big one from the standpoint of a lot of times as the disease process continues, um, seniors can actually have trouble, um, not physically with things like buttons and zippers and things like that. But sadly, our advanced uh, dementia patients sometimes even forget how to uh, work a button through a buttonhole or a zipper. And so comfortable clothes that are easy to get on and off is a great gift idea. Um, you know, photo albums that the person can look at. Uh, you know, frankly, sometimes a, a person with moderate and advanced dementias may not recall all the faces that are on the, in the pictures, but it does bring comfort to them oftentimes to be able to flip through that photo album and and see familiar faces that they know even if there's a lot of other people in the picture that they don't recall so uh, those are good gift ideas yeah, you know my uh, my dad even one time um, he digitized uh, uh, scanned a lot of my grandfather's old pictures from when he was young when he, when he was just recently married and and back when he was a pilot and and he put all of those on a um, one of those computer picture frames that mm -hmm. just cycles through the pictures 
you know, he didn't expect my grandfather to be able to scan those photos and upload them himself. So he did all of that work and then just presented him with the picture frame that had all of that stuff already loaded. And my grandfather loved that. He, he kept it in the living room. He looked at it all the time. He talked about it every time you showed yeah. up. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, uh, you can use a little technology, but again, do it with the nostalgia um, with the things that, that, that give them peace and comfort in all of that. Now, of course, if, if there, you might also have a caregiver around here that needs, mm. uh, that needs a little gift. And, you know, a lot of times, one of the best things you can give to a caregiver is a break. Yeah, some time. Uh, <laughs> just some time. And, you know, uh, for example, here, uh, here in our community, we have the Alzheimer's Alliance, which has a respite center. We have Opportunities Inc., which has a day center for senior mm -hmm. adults. Mm -hmm. Both of these are places where that, that uh, person with the disease mm -hmm. can go and have a good time, but more importantly, that caregiver can take a break. And uh, you know, a gift certificate uh, or something like that for one of these um, that can be a huge benefit uh, for the caregiver. Yeah. So, you know, um, the holiday time, it's a time where a lot of times we can get the best um, out of uh, a family member that may be aging, um, but it also can be very stressful on everyone, including the senior, including the caregiver. So, uh, you know, it's just take a mindful approach and, uh, you know, try to enjoy the time of the year and uh you know not not worry and stress about it so much that's but. right that's right well uh, if you have any more questions for us you can always call in and ask your questions to us live on the radio every saturday mm -hmm. at noon uh, during our live radio program and you can also find us out there on the uh, internet at uh, uh, aginginsight.com and of course you can pick up a copy of our aging insight magazine where uh, you can learn about Medicaid and veterans benefits and all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. But uh, until then. Yeah, until then, uh, we will see you next time on Aging Insight. And, uh, you know, if you enjoy this program, make sure you let the sponsors that you see uh, on the breaks, let them know that you enjoy the program. And, of course, we appreciate uh, KLFI and uh, Beach Street Communications for making it possible for us to come into your homes to give information. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for this week's Aging Insight program with John Ross and Lisa Schollmeyer. This program is made possible by 